What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, looking at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. We would be doing a trading update today, but I actually didn't take any positions, I didn't do any day trades today. We're going to be talking about that and a little bit here down the road in this video. And we're also going to be looking at some stocks and ETFs that are setting up for potential trades this upcoming week in the stock market. But before we do get into all of these different topics, for everybody out there that finds value in these videos, and if you find value in this video in a couple of minutes, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And if you're new to the channel, I have two links down below in the description box for you, both 100% free of charge, a Discord group chat, as well as a Facebook group. Please feel free to join those you'll find value in there i 100 guarantee that so without further ado let's hop right into it what ended up happening today in the overall market starting off with the s p 500 here we can see we ended up having a pretty strong green day up about 19 points on the day up nearly 0.7 percent on the S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average up 211 points today, up nearly 0.85%, 0.82% to be exact. And the NASDAQ Composite here up 0.83%, nearly identical to the Dow Jones, up nearly $61 on the day. So finally today, guys, we're starting to see some direction in the overall market. So for those of you guys that have been following the channel for the past couple of videos, this is something that caused me to be pretty cautious, right? I've been saying this over the past couple of videos that I haven't been really taking as many positions, as many swing trades as I normally do due to the market not really picking a direction. And if we take a look on the S&P here, and if we break down, you know, on a smaller time frame chart, we can see exactly what I'm talking about, right? Pretty much ever since we dumped from 2860 all the way down to this bottom at about 2785, we've been kind of hovering around this area over these past couple of days, hence why, you know, I was saying the S&P wasn't really picking a direction until today. We finally saw some push to the upside where we're starting to see the continuation of the uptrend. Let me explain what I'm talking about in terms of that. So if we're hopping back here to the 184 hour chart, like I said, we were struggling to pick a direction, right? We were hovering above this 50 simple moving average support, but we weren't distinctly pushing up and we weren't distinctly pushing down right but today we finally saw the big pop which is telling me now as a trader as an investor as a person doing technical analysis that this uptrend is finally continuing itself after a couple of days of consolidation here and what I was looking for in particular and for those of you guys that watched my morning video and my in my video yesterday you know this I was looking to see whether or not we were going to break the upside, uh, you know, the top of this wedge here, or if we were going to break the support here to start to push down. And that was really what I was looking for in terms of a direction in the S&P 500, right? We were making lower highs here over the past couple of trading days, right? We've been talking about that. Take a look at these lower highs. But we also started to make higher lows at the same time based on the two trading days prior to today, right? This trading day here, this trading day, both two higher lows, meaning we were kind of continuing or starting rather an uptrend, but at the same time, we were making lower highs, putting us in this wedge. So the fact that we broke the resistance of this wedge, we broke above the 180 day simple moving average here. This is telling me that again, like we saw in the longer time frame charts, that we're continuing this uptrend pattern here in the S&P 500, the 500 largest publicly traded US companies. So for this upcoming week, guys, 
I'm going to be looking to see, are we going to maintain the 2830-ish level, the 2825 level, really above this level here as a new support level, which, you know, I think is possible, especially due to the trajectory of this chart right now. And I want to see, are we going to test the 2860 high that we saw? Let's see, was this about a week ago? Yup, the 3rd or the 21st rather of March. We ended up topping at 2860, and again, all you, well, most of you guys probably already know that. So this upcoming week, if we break out of this level, that's going to be huge for the markets to potentially test all-time highs, which if we see on this chart and we look back a couple of months, we're at about 29.40 and 91 cents for the S&P 500. So as of now, guys, this is pointing up. The technicals are pointing up, heading into the next week for the S&P 500. So let's see here for the Dow Jones what I'm personally looking at. So we talked about yesterday how the Dow has been trading in between 25,500, that support level, and the resistance at about $25,800. So today we clearly saw a 200-point green day pushing us out of that resistance, which is a good sign for us to test the next resistance, which is at about 26,000 and 70 ish dollars and if we were to break that level the next spot would be around twenty six thousand two hundred dollars and if we hop here to the 10 day 30 minute actually let's go to the 20 day one hour actually no let's go to the 30 day 90 minute this will show us a bit better this is still technically speaking here at a lower high from the previous two meaning this is kind of so the similar pattern that we saw on on the SPX on a smaller time frame basis. The Dow Jones is showing that on a longer term basis. I touched upon this in yesterday's video how, you know, take a look here, guys. The five day, five minute, we're kind of making a wedge here of lower highs and higher lows at the same time. That's kind of what we're seeing on the Dow Jones, but on a stretched time frame here, right? Let's just, let's just, uh, you know, take a look here. See, we're making lower highs, but we're also making higher lows. So this upcoming week, guys, if we are able to break out of this downwards resistance here, this downwards wedge resistance, that's going to be a pretty bullish move for the Dow. And from there, again, we're going to be testing 26,070, this uh, resistance level. And if we were to break that level, of course, the next spot, like I said, is going to be 26200 That is where we're going to be testing in terms of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So keep an eye on that, guys. And of course, if we break 26200 we're going to be off to all-time highs. Potentially, we're going to be testing the all-time highs at that point, which is nearly $27,000, $26,951.81 to be exact. So that's what I'm watching this upcoming week, guys. Just keep an eye for the upwards push here. But let's say we get rejected. Keep an eye on the test, on the support of that wedge. That's going to be a pretty big, uh, you know, tell where we're going to be going, you know, either up or down here in the Dow Jones. And if we're hopping over here to the NASDAQ composite very quickly, um, Let's take a look. So we can see we double bottomed here. We talked about this yesterday at the support at around 7,300. We popped above the resistance, the then resistance, which again now is a new support at about 7,350. And now we're trading above the 50 SMA. We finally popped above that resistance, which was a resistance over the past uh, really couple of days here from the 25th to the 27th of March. And now it seems like we're fiddling and we're testing that resistance right here at about $7,400 flat. So this week, this upcoming week on Monday, make sure you guys um, really take an eye on the NASDAQ to see are we trading above the $7,400 level? Are we going to be maintaining this as a new support? From there, if we do do that, we're going to be going up 
potentially on a technical basis here, up to $7,500 and $40, $7,540, which is the next resistance, which honestly is not too far off. If we do a little um, drag here, we can see it's nearly about 1.7% to the upside here. So two green days, you know, two uh, decent green days will get us there. One insane green day will probably get us to those levels there. And if we're just popping out here to the one-year chart, let's just see how far off we are from all-time highs in the NASDAQ. We can see we're nearly about 300 and 16 points here, give or take, away from the all-time highs, about 4% away from the all-time high at about $7,728.75 in terms of the NASDAQ. And honestly, guys, it still blows my mind how quick we recovered out of this massive drop that we saw, you know, from October to December. It still honestly blows my mind that in 2019 alone, the NASDAQ is nearly up, or at one point it was up nearly 22%, which kind of makes me a bit skeptical. I'm not going to lie to you guys because these types of gains, they are unsustainable over the long term, right? This is not going to just continue to run up. If that were the case, you know, the NASDAQ would be up 100%, you know, this year alone, right? If we were to just continue to run up at this pace over the span of a year, the NASDAQ, the Dow, the S&P, the indices guys that we follow, they would be up 70, 80, 90, maybe 100% if we were to maintain this, which is why I I still believe we're going to see a big pullback again in these coming weeks. Of course, none of us know we can't time the market, but that's just what my gut feeling is telling me, right? This is just not sustainable here. We need to see a correction, in my opinion, of at least, you know, 5%, something like that. But who knows, guys? We might hit all-time highs before we do get that correction in the major indices. That's just my personal opinion here. So that is what the overall markets are looking like. The Dow finally, you know, is looking to pop up a bit. The S&P is looking to form a, uh, you know, the direction that we were looking for over these past couple of days. And of course, the Nasdaq, same exact thing, right? It's finally starting to pick a direction. So that's what I'm looking at, guys. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Do you think these gains are sustainable? I'm sure a lot of you don't. Let me know your reasons down below. And while you're at it, guys, again, if you're enjoying the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet already. So let's talk about, again, I didn't make any trades today, but let's talk about some other stocks and ETFs that could potentially be good for this upcoming week, starting off with gold. And actually, let me just talk about very quickly why I didn't take any trades. So for this, uh, for those that watched my video this morning, I talked about a couple of stocks, one being Apple, gold, uh, you know, JNUG, crude oil, UWT. I was talking about trading these stocks today, and honestly, none of them ended up, you know, playing out, which is why I just didn't want to force anything, right? I had a green week this week. I had a couple of good trading days. You know, I'm in NVIDIA right now. I'm up on the position. I didn't want to force anything and end up taking a red day today on Friday. And I sometimes do that. Honestly, guys, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. I don't always trade and force trades on a Friday. You know, Fridays are typically days where, you know, I'm a little bit more cautious. And today just ended up being one of those days where I just did not end up taking a trade. But for this upcoming week, I'm watching to see if gold does end up, you know, pushing up into the 1300 to 1305 level, which I do think there is some potential in it doing, which JNUG is going to open up a solid trade. So we saw a pretty massive move this morning in gold, which really made me believe that, okay, this is the day that we're going to recover. But then we saw the big, you know, the big, uh, what's it called, rejection here by this uh, 50 cent 
simple moving average. We saw the cross below um, the 50 SMA, below the 180 SMA, which was actually yesterday, I believe. Let's see when that cross was. Yeah, it was yesterday after market hours. We saw that bearish cross, and we got rejected pretty hard, which kind of scared me away from taking a position in JNUG, if we're being completely honest here. But the fact that we're still maintaining the 1296 uh, support level, which again, for those of you guys that don't know, was an older resistance. And the fact that we're maintaining that level still gives me some hope that next week gold can recover. And for those of you guys that don't know, the futures markets, they're actually open on 6 p.m., or at 6 p.m. rather, Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. So you'll be able to see the action of gold here, whether it's going to, you know, maybe dump a little bit more or push up. This way you can plan your trades. So hopefully, guys, gold does end up opening up on Sunday. You know, hopefully in the 1300 range, that's going to open up a good trade, in my opinion, this upcoming week in JNUG. So gold, I'm still watching that one very closely, guys. And uh, let's talk about natural gas very quickly, right? Because natural gas now is looking very, very bearish. We can see ever since we ended up breaking that 275 support that we called out a couple of uh, trading videos ago, we've been continuously downtrending and are rejected by the 50 simple moving average, making lower lows, lower highs, all of the things that we look at for an indication of a downtrend, which, excuse me, in natural gas is case here, DGAS is a very good, you know, potential move um, to trade or ETF to trade rather because that one goes up whenever natural gas is selling off. So take a look at this massive move that DGAS made today of about 5%. So this could end up, if we do end up pulling back next week, which there is a big possibility because every time over the past couple of uh, trading days we pushed to a higher high, we saw a little pullback. I think that's going to open up a good entry point in DGAS and what to look out for in natural gas here is to see are we going to start to see a give or a push back up here and a rejection at the 50 SMA which has been a resistance over the past couple of trading days this is how I'm approaching this trade guys if we start to push back up here and we see some resistance there on Monday you know that's going to be a good entry point in DGAS, in my opinion, especially if we start to get rejected and we confirm that we're pushing back down towards that next lower low. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of natural gas and DGAS. Apple ended up doing pretty well today, up about 0.65%. This is another one I ended up talking about in the morning video today. Did not pull the trigger on a position quite yet, but... This still looking, the setup is still looking pretty decent here. We're maintaining the 50 simple moving average. We're maintaining above that support level of about 185. And it's looking like we do want to hit the 195 resistance, which is the next resistance that I'm targeting to see whether or not Apple is going to get to. And if we break out of that level, of course, the next spot we're going to be heading to is around 2 hundred dollars so that's all i'm going to talk about today guys i don't want to talk about too many stocks because i typically talk uh, about more stocks in my sunday video so for those of you guys that don't know on sunday i take requests from you guys in the comment section on what stocks you want me to talk about also in the discord group chat in the call out section you can call out stocks there and i talk about them in my sunday video so now that we're talking about it Drop a comment down below. Let me know any ticker symbols that you want me to talk about in Sunday's video, and I'll be glad to do that. And if you're in the Discord chat, just leave them in the call-out section again. And if you're not in there, just get down in there, guys. It's in the description box below, 100% free. You can chat with everybody in the community. We have about 600-plus people in there. I don't know exactly, but I know for a fact it's above 600 people. And you can leave your ticker symbol, stock, ETF, whatever, in the call-out section. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, drop a comment. Again, what do you guys want me to talk about? What are your thoughts on this video? Where are the markets going? Let me know down below. And if you're new to the channel, hit that red button. You see that red button? Yep. That's the subscribe button. Hit that button, the notification bell as well, so you're notified every time that I do make a video. I make videos every single day, stock market updates, trading updates, trading tips, investing tips, personal finance, stuff like that. Feel free to get 
into the community by hitting that red button. So I hope you guys all did well today. I'll catch you all in the next video. Enjoy your weekend. Stay safe. Peace out.